welcome back to another TechMinds video. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Tiny SA Ultra, a spectrum analyzer and signal generator. Now, the Tiny SA Ultra has to be the most cost effective way of checking how well or how bad a radio transmitter or receiver works, with its current price coming in at around 100 UK pounds. The features that the Tiny SA Ultra offers would cost thousands in high end gear. But does the cheap price mean it's not going to work? Well, in this video, we'll perform some transmitter and receiver tests and you can make your own minds up afterwards. So in the box, they supply a USB-C cable, which can be used to either charge the Tiny SA or be used to connect to a PC running the Tiny SA software. A couple of short SMA patch cables are also supplied in the kit, which can be used to connect to equipment or used to perform the initial calibration, which we'll look at shortly. Now along the bottom of the Tiny SA Ultra, there's a USB-C connection along with a micro SD card slot and a 3.5 millimeter jack. The SD card slot does come with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card already installed. Now this can be used to save any data like screenshots or profiles. The 3.5 millimeter socket can be used to plug in headphones as the Tiny SA Ultra can demodulate FM signals if required. Now on the top of the Tiny SA, you'll find a small power switch and a little movable control to scroll through the menus. However, the screen is touchscreen, so you don't need to rely on this. On the side, we have two SMA connections. Now one is used for calibration and the other is the main RF output and input. Now for those that are interested, here are the main specifications of the Tiny SA Ultra. In Spectrum Analyzer, high performance mode is supported from 100 kilohertz up to 800 megahertz. And while in ultra mode, stable performance is supported up to 5.3 gigahertz. In RF signal generator mode, a sine wave output of between 100 kilohertz and 800 megahertz is supported. And with a square wave output, the supported frequency range is between 800 megahertz and 4.4 gigahertz. Now the Tiny SA Ultra features a four inch color touch screen along with an internal 3000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. So once powered on, there are two main modes of operation, either spectrum analyzer or signal generator, which are selectable by using the jog wheel at the top or obviously the touch screen. Now, if you've used a nano VNA in the past, then the user interface of the tiny SA will be quite familiar to you. Being touch screen, it makes it extremely easy to navigate through the menus and perform configuration as required. So first up, let's perform the calibration. We'll take one of the supplied SMA patch cables and attach one end to the cow port and then the other end to the RF port. Then we just need to tap the screen to bring up the menu and then tap on config. Now on this next menu, tap on level cow. Now we just tap on the top selection, calibrate 100 kilohertz to 5.34 gigahertz and then let the tiny SA perform its calibration. Now, incidentally, if you want to use the Tiny SA Ultra above 800 megahertz, then you'll need to enable ultra mode. To do this, tap on the screen, which shows the menu, and then tap on config, then more, and then enable ultra. Now, this will require you to enter a pin number to activate ultra mode. Now, you can go and follow the link that's shown on the display and look on the forum, but the pin number is 4321, and then just press the X1 button. Now, ultra mode is enabled. The Tiny SA Ultra also has an inbuilt LNA and attenuator, which can be manually set up to 31 dB. An automatic attenuator mode is also available. The absolute maximum input power with 0 dB internal attenuation would be 10 dBm. However, it is suggested that a maximum of 5 dBm with internal attenuation set to automatic should be used. So let's perform some tests and for this I will use the Windows software so it's easier for you to see the results. I'm going to connect to Bayerfeng UVS9 Mark III to a 10 dBm attenuator which then connects to a 20 dBm attenuator. I'm only doing this as I don't have a 30 dBm attenuator to hand and I wanted 30 dBs of attenuation externally before the signal gets into the tiny SA Ultra. We then connect this to the RF port of the Tiny SA and set the output frequency on the radio to 145.225 MHz. The radio has been put into low power output, which measured about 1 watt on FM. The frequency span is set from 1 MHz to 500 MHz. 
And if we press the PTT on the radio, this is what we see. Now the first harmonic is almost as strong as the main wanted signal. So let's just change the frequency span from one megahertz to one gigahertz and then perform the same test. So wow, we can see lots of harmonics here. I guess this is why these radios are so cheap. Now let's do one more test with the same radio, but set the frequency to 433 megahertz. So here we can see the first harmonic a smidge over 50% of the main output signal. Not so great in my opinion. So let's change radios and for this test I'll use the GD88 on the same frequency as before and on low power. Now that looks to me like a pretty clean output which is extremely surprising. So lastly let's test the output from a Yaesu FT3D also set to 145.225 MHz and on low power. That's also very clean. In fact, I don't think I would expect anything less from Yesu. So let's try 433 MHz and see how well that performs. Now what's interesting here is that we do see a fairly low harmonic around minus 50 dBm. So that's the analyzer function briefly tested. So let's now try the signal generator. So for the first test, I'll use the GD88 and set the frequency to 145.225. The output level from the generator will be minus 73 dBm, which should equate to around an S9 signal. And the modulation type will be set to FM and a sinus output with a constant tone. Now the S meter on these radios are not so good and don't really show S points. But what I'm doing here is lowering the output level to see how low I can go before the radio stops hearing the signal. Now the Tiny SA Ultra can go as low as 123 dBm. So now I'll add a 30 dBm attenuator in line. So starting off at minus 123 dBm with a 30 dB attenuator in line gives us a signal of a minus 155 dBm. Now let's creep this up until we hear something. So at about minus 127 dBm is where we lose the signal from the generator. That's not bad at all. So now let's perform the same test with the Yaesu FT3D. This time I'll start off with the hardware 30 dBm attenuator already attached. At minus 123 dBm we can hear the signal a lot stronger than we did on the GD88. So let's lower it some more. So the lowest I could go was minus 134 dBm before hitting minus 135 dBm where the signal was lost completely. So this test proves that the FT3D has a much better receiver sensitivity than the GD88 radio. Let's finally test the Burfang radio that I tested earlier. Same frequency of 145.225 MHz and the generator has the same settings. Well, this is surprising. The BFN's lowest injected signal was minus 134 dBm before the signal could not be heard anymore. Now this is the same as the Yaesu FT3D, so that's very surprising indeed. Now as you can imagine, there are lots more tests that can be performed with a tiny SA Ultra, for example, airband 70 centimeters and any other bands the radio supports. Now if you do want to see more tutorials or something specific, then please let me know down in the comments section below. The designer of the Tiny SA Ultra, Eric from the Netherlands, also has a YouTube channel and has created a playlist of videos showing the Tiny SA. Now I'll link that below. I will also leave a link where I purchased this one from so you can be sure you're getting an original Tiny SA Ultra if you'd like to get one. I think the Tiny SA Ultra is a bit of a game changer. Having tools like this would normally cost thousands.
Now, if you guys use a Tiny SA Ultra and got any tips or recommendations for using it, then please feel free to comment below. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.